What's up video Ford nation? This is video for Ruan with another awesome video for tutorial. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at using masks and also rotoscoping in After Effects. So first of all, let's import our eyes video that you can find in the project files, drag that into your project section and drag that onto a new composition to create a composition using the settings from that clip. The easiest way for me to explain how a mask works is think of a mask as cutting a hole out of your video footage. So let me show you what I mean. Let's create a new solid. So right click new solid and we want to change the size of our solid and we want to make it the same as the composition. So you can just click on this make comp size and it will automatically take the settings from your composition and make it red. Click OK and then OK to confirm again. Now let's move that solid underneath our footage and then we're going to create a mask on our footage layer. So click on the eyes footage and then there's a couple of ways that you can create a mask. So first of all, you can use the rectangle tool to create a mask. So click on the rectangle and then click and drag and that will create a rectangle mask on that footage. So as you can see, the mask area will reveal the footage and anything outside of that mask will see through that footage onto the red layer. So we can also invert that mask. So if you click on invert it next to that mask one, it will actually do the opposite. So basically we've cut a hole in our footage. So everything else is visible except this section here, which is actually looking through onto the red solid. Okay, so let's delete that mask. So you can just click on the mask underneath your footage and hit delete on the keyboard. And then you can hold in on the rectangle tool and let's select the ellipse tool. And then you can drag out a circle to create a circular mask on your footage. Another thing that you can do is you can feather the mask to just make the edges of the mask a bit softer. So if you expand the settings underneath your mask, you'll see that you've got a mask feather. And if you increase that value, you'll see that the edges of the mask will become soft. Okay, so when do you actually need to use a mask? Let me show you an example. So I'm going to delete this mask and I'm also going to delete the red solid. And then I'm going to duplicate my footage. So on my footage, I'm going to press Command D or Control D if you're on a PC. And then I'm going to use the pen tool instead of the rectangle or the ellipse tool to create a custom mask. I actually want to zoom in here a little bit on the eye. So I'm just going to zoom in on the eye area and you can use the hand tool just to pan around or you can hold in space and then just click and drag to pan around and with the pen tool selected I'm just going to click around the eye area to mask that out so just click click and then close your mask so basically we've got two layers now so if I hide the bottom layer if I click on this little eye on the side to hide it you'll see that that's the one layer at the top which is only showing that mask and then we've got the normal layer below that which is just the normal footage and now we can go ahead and apply an effect to only that section so let's right click on that top layer go to effect and let's go to color correction and maybe let's add a brightness and contrast effect so let's change the brightness down and you'll see that will only affect that section of the footage because we mastered out, it will only affect that area. So as you can see, the edges are quite hard and a way to soften that is to use a feather, of course. So on that layer, what you can do is press MM on your keyboard to expand it, or you can just expand the layer and go down to masks, look for your mask, and then you can change the amount of feather on that. So let's change that to around 15. Okay, so as you can see, you can't really see those edges around that mask anymore. So that's actually working pretty good. What you can do, you can add more than one mask onto one layer. So with that top layer selected, we're going to create another mask over this eye. So let's click the pen tool again and let's draw a mask around this eye. Let's close that mask and you'll see that it will automatically apply the same effect to this mask because that effect is applied to that whole layer. As you can see, the second mask is not feathered at all. So I'm going to expand that layer and I'm going to look for mask number two, expand mask two, and also set the feather amount to around 15. Okay, so now we've got two masks set up on that layer. They're both feathered and looking good. But now when you play your video back, you'll see that you'll have a problem. Because those masks are not really moving around, they're staying in the same place. You can see that the effect is not really working. So that's where rotoscoping come into play. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and delete our second mask. So I'm going to expand masks, click on the second mask and delete that just so that we can concentrate on one mask at a time. So rotoscoping is basically when you create a mask and you animate the shape of that mask to actually follow along with an object or something in your footage. So this is a very good example because we want to have that mask follow the shape of the eye. So I'm going to show you guys three ways of doing rotoscoping in After Effects. So the first way, which is kind of the manual way, is if you go into that mask and you animate the mask path. So if you click the stopwatch next to mask path, you can actually animate the shape of this mask over time. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go around to about two seconds and I'm going to double click on this mask to select the whole mask and then you can actually move that mask around. So I'm just going to readjust it to go over the eye and if we scrub back you'll see that that mask is actually moving around. So let's go around to four seconds, double click on the mask again and move it into place. Let's go to five seconds, double click, move it into place. So if I scrub through this now you'll see that that mask is kind of following the eye but it's not really accurate. What you can also do is you can animate these individual points. So if I click inside the mask you can animate these points individually. So let's go back to the start and let's say we want to start animating some of these points. So let's go to one second and then you can click on these points and drag them around to adjust your mask. And that will actually animate as well because we've got the stopwatch next to mask path enabled. So let's do something like that. And let's go over to two seconds and then readjust those points again. And as you can see, this is a real time consuming process. Sometimes you'll have a video of about a thousand frames and then you'll need to go through this and just adjust and refine these points to make sure that your mask stays on track. So if you play this back, you'll see it's kind of following the eye around, but it's not really accurate. It's a bit jumping around, etc. So rotoscoping is basically going frame by frame and readjusting all these points to make sure that your mask is staying in the right location. And as you can imagine, this can take some time. Okay, so let me show you the second way, uh, which is a little bit easier. Doesn't always work, but it's actually just quite nice to know about it. So I'm going to delete this mask. Let's disable the effect on this top layer as well. So just click on the FX next to brightness and contrast. And then we're going to be looking at the rotor brush to add some rotoscoping to the eye. So to do this, you need to double click on your layer. So I'm going to double click and it's going to open up in a new tab. And then here, right at the top, you'll have a little character with a paintbrush next to that. And I'm going to click on that and make sure you're on the first frame. And then I'm going to draw with this just a shape inside the eye. And that will try and detect the lines around the eye. So as you can see, that wasn't really successful. So we can try and refine this by holding an alt on the keyboard. And you'll see that your cursor will change to a red a circle and then just draw a line outside of the area where you don't want your mask to be and you'll see that that will go into the area again. Another thing to check before we start is this timeline here at the bottom. We just need to extend that to be sure that our roto brush will be animated all the way. Okay so now you've got the basic shape set up and you can press space on your keyboard to play ahead and that will try and automatically detect where that mask area should go. You can also readjust or refine this in the middle, just press spacebar to stop. And as you can see, we've got a bit of a problem going on here. So I'm just going to draw a green line on this area to expand it a bit, something like that. And then I'm going to hit spacebar again to continue. Okay, so once that's finished, we need to freeze our roto brush. So click on the freeze button, and that's just going to go through all the frames and just save the mask shape. Okay, once it's done with the freeze, you can close this tab here at the top to go out of the rotor brush. And then if we solo that layer, so just click on this little dot next to that top layer, you'll see that it actually masked out the eye. And if we play this back, you'll see that it's kind of moving around and it's following the eye. So as you can see, we've got some hard edges around the eye and we can also add a feather to the rotor brush. So if we expand that layer, we go to effects and we go to roto brush 
expand that and then we're going to expand the rotor brush mat and then the amount of feather we're going to change to around 20. So you'll see that's just going to soften that out. So if I play this back you'll see that that looks a little bit better. Okay let's just scroll up here and let's minimize the settings underneath that layer and then I'm going to unsolo that layer again. So we've got our normal two layers. So the top layer I'm just going to rename to I and the bottom layer I'm going to rename to footage just so that we know which layer is which. So on the eye layer I'm going to enable the brightness and contrast effect again and you'll see that's our brightness of minus 80 so let's just set that to minus 100 and then you'll see that the mask area is following the eye around. So I'm going to show you the third way how to do rotoscoping in After Effects. So first of all I'm going to disable our brightness and contrast effect and then I'm going to delete the rotor brush effect on that top layer. Okay, then let's go to the first frame and then I'm going to draw a mask around the eye again, the same way we've done it in the first example. So I'm just going to click around the eye to create a mask, something like that. And then I'm going to expand that layer and on that mask I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on track mask. So this usually works best if your shape stays the same. It can be moving around the scene, but if it's going to change shape, then track mask does not work that well. So just test it out and see what works best for you. So now on the bottom right hand side of your screen, it will open up the tracker and you'll have four buttons here that you can track forward, either by frame or you can just track forward all the frames. So I'm going to click this button, track selected masks forward, and it's going to go through each and every frame and it's going to try and track that mask to that shape. So you can see the video playing and you can see the mask is actually following along. Okay, once that's done, you'll actually see if you expand your mask that it's created all these keyframes on your mask path, which is great. And now we can enable our effect again, the brightness and contrast. So let's just enable that. And let's enable some feather on that mask again. So let's set that to around, let's try 30. Okay, let's minimize that and let's play that back. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's just adjust that feather. I think 30 is a little bit too much. So let's just expand that. Let's set that down to about 15 and let's play that back again. So as you can see, that's looking pretty good. You can't really see the mask moving around. That's pretty solid. Okay, so that's the basic uses of masks and also how to rotoscope in After Effects. Also be sure to check out video4.com for some awesome clips to practice with and I'll see you guys in the next video.